Bud's out on the road. David, thanks for calling in. You're on WWL. Hi. Hey, Bud. Thanks for having me on. Sure, man. Look, I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm in the business of, of seafood, and, you know, I heard I heard something pretty disturbing this morning from from somebody that the health department is being excluded from the high-level meetings about the disbursement chemical and what it's going to do with the oil balls that fall on the bottom and how it's going to affect oysters. And these guys are Johnny on the spot with making sure that our oysters are safe. And I don't I don't get it, but why the health department is being excluded, it's not being told, and it's it's you know, I mean that ain't right. No they, 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 No, they, it's they, not they, right. I, I I you know what? I've 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 asked this question that nobody ever seems to have a an, a an exact answer to because frankly nobody really knows and I guess the only way to figure it out is to go out and take a kajillion oil samples out there at varying depths as they put this dispersant on the spill as it's, as it's literally leaking right out of the ground the undersea uh, it is breaking it up it is making the sheen to be making the spill to be more of a sheen than it is clumps but they don't know how big the cloud is down there I mean there's no camera there's a camera at the bottom and there's cameras at the top, but I don't know of any cameras that are in between that can even see this anyway to say what kind of cloud thing there is going on. I know that they were a bunch of dead turtles that they found, and I don't know about a necropsy being done, but they said they weren't coated with oil. They may have eaten contaminated who knows what, then that might have killed them. But, you know, I, I, I'm with you. You know what? What, what? what I'm just trying to do is I'm trying to get it out into the public. And I'm not going to mention my sources, okay, because I don't want to get people in trouble. But, but they're being kept out of the meetings. And if this radio station has the power to maybe make them rethink that, but that's, that's ridiculous when it's said that it's too high level of meeting for the head of the health department to be there. That's... Now, which that's, which that's head of the health? You talking about, you talking about uh, 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 the head of health and hospitals here? Yes, sir. And he's not allowed into these muckety muck meetings. He's, he's right. They, they, they were sent a memo saying that it was too high level for them to be there. And I'm sure you're going to get a lot of denial from that. Okay, but maybe it'll scare them enough to where the word's out and they're going to let these guys in there. And I know you got a lot of politicians calling in. I know you got uh, y'all got a lot of power at WWL. And just the, the word needs to be out. Our health department needs to be involved in what they're doing mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in this whole process. Well, with I, the... I'm actually a researcher from a uh, think tank in Washington, D.C., the Center for American Progress, and I've come down here and I'm traveling along the coast to find out what's happening and what people are doing to uh, deal with this growing catastrophe. And yesterday I was in Mississippi, and I talked with... Uh, the scientists at the Institute for Marine Mammal Studies, which is where they're doing the sea turtle necropsy. Mm -hmm. And I also talked with scientists at the Gulf Coast Research Laboratory, which is a uh, major fisheries uh, research laboratory with the University of Southern Mississippi. And uh, what those scientists told me was uh, really pretty genuinely troubling. I think your caller really hit on an important question that I have not seen any clear answers from, which is... Uh, how these dispersants are being used. Mm -hmm. The dispersant that they're using is uh, is about is a toxic one. It's toxic to uh, shellfish and larval fishes, um, and they're injecting it at the, you know at the base of the seabed, which I've, so far as I know isn't something that's really been done before. And I don't think no, I don't think it's been done at that level. I think well, no, actually, it might not have been done. Frankly, I think it was an idea that somebody else had. Right, and so this is something that, like, the effects uh, on the, you know, on the shellfish, on the sea, uh, are unknown. And I think that's one of the reasons that the caller was right to be concerned if, uh, if you know, the Health and Human Services isn't involved in the high-level things. Because so far as what, you, at least from the public statements, the health of the water, under the water, uh, is not been a priority you know it's not a top priority yeah, uh, yes it's, it's, it's almost it's like it, it's it's like I, I i don't know i don't want to say it's a drum that i've been banging but it's a question that i've asked more than once and I, I really don't even know where to go look it up is is what is 
okay, if they hit this, if they hit the, the oil coming out of the leaks with a dispersant and it's it's breaking it up and it's helping it shrink, but is it all, I mean, sink, but yeah, is it all right. sinking or is it, I mean, some of it's obviously still going up because the sheen. Right, I mean, I think what you can expect is that they're essentially creating an underwater cloud of oil and it's, it's being dispersed, but it's contaminated, so that means that it's contaminating an even greater amount of uh, ocean. And the, the marine scientists I was talking to yesterday, the big point they made was the longer this continues, the, you know, the more the oil expands and the greater the impact it's going to have on the Gulf. One thing that um, I was told that I had no idea was the location of the oil well, the location of Deepwater Horizon, that 40 miles off the coast of Louisiana, mm -hmm. that's a, that is a spawning ground for bluefin tuna right there. Okay. You guys, the whole time now, where are the skimmers? How many of them are working? How much oil are they picking up every day? They ought to be picking up 10,000 barrels if they put in five into the ocean. I hadn't heard much about that. I'd like to know more about it. I'll, I will ask the next guest to have on. It's I'm hoping to get Fat Allen. I, again, we have been in the queue for him, but it, every time it's tentative because... This is the guy who is, he is the man in charge. Uh, appreciate you taking my call. Sure. You, you know, you, you touched on a point that I wanted to make about the burn boom and the 1994 law that they're supposed to have that pre-station for these type of disasters. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it goes deeper than that. There's an article on the website, there's a particular website, I should say, that is for engineers in the uh, in, you know energy industry. Mm -hmm. And there's a, it's a 2005 study on the high risk type of drilling that BP was doing with Transocean. And the very same manufacturer, Condor, of the blowout preventer that didn't work, uh, manufactures deep well drilling blowout preventers that on that are actually on the drilling rig itself with a new type of uh, wellhead that will shear the pipe and it also is it's got the transducers that can be put on the ships, the tending ships, as an additional safety feature in case of a problem that they can automatically shut it off. Mm -hmm. So this spill was preventable. It was absolutely preventable. There's the, the type of drilling they chose to do was very high risk, had a very high rate of failure. What this article also points out is... Wait, 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 wait. That's, uh, this type of drilling has a very high rate of failure in that what? They don't find the oil or that they... Uh, no, uh, how high often rate of failure in blowout preventers is what I should have said. Yeah. High rate of failure in blowout preventers. These blowout preventers they were using, the shears that they're talking about that cuts the riser, okay, they don't work well at those depths. That's why the riser was cut. What the article also points out is once the riser snapped, once the rig sunk, and the riser was separated, it was impossible to, to close that blow-off, uh, blow-out preventer. Mm -hmm. that it, sending down, giving us false hope that they were going to send down, well, first of all, saying that it wasn't leaking was a blatant lie. They knew it was. And secondly, when they said they were sending down submersible subs to, to operate the blow-out preventer, they knew there was no hope there. They knew. And what about the article, what about that acoustic uh, trigger thing we can all that's do here? Part, that, that's what they're talking about. That's the new system, and it's not that new of a system. It's it's almost a decade old. It's been used around the uh, other countries. In fact, it's mandatory in other countries. But of course, Bush administration didn't make it mandatory here. But you know, it's like building codes. You have a minimum standard, okay? All right, yeah, well, I, 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 however, I understand. I don't want to start pointing a finger at Clinton because he signed a bill and they didn't do the fire boom, you know? But, I mean, but, but somebody however, didn't, they, what, they dropped the ball. Yeah, well, however, what I'm getting to is if you know you're doing a high-risk uh, operation and there's other uh, pre preventative uh, safety equipment and you choose not to do it, and then secondly, there's another article talking about uh, when these blowout preventers fail, it's, uh, there's been 36 instances that they've, they've gotten this article, 18 of them where they were pouring concrete. So they know there's a high risk of doing that as well. Now, you don't station fire booms out. You don't have these chimneys available. Uh, I think, you know, we're talking about now there's the, the trust fund because their, their maximum claims is $75 million. They're going to try to change the law specifically for this. I don't know if that's going to work. I doubt, doubt if you can change the law for a specific, uh, you know, 